Hi again everybody, it's Susan and I'm glad to see you back here. We are here in the fourth of five part series and we're going through the bow spring alignment system and discussing the five subsystems of the body that can help to start to bring new ideas into your posture, bring new conversation into how you hold your spine, how you allow your skeleton to move through space, whether it be stacking bones in more of a compressive way of lengthening and straightening out the body, or if there's a little bit more of a bend, a little bit more of a bounce in the joints so that there's articulation through each vertebra of your spine. This is the bowspring. This freedom, this idea of le levity and agility. And I'm working through these five areas of the body from the radiant heart and channel through the wings and the roots. And now we're approaching the belly. And what I want you to recognize is over these last few videos, if you've watched in the series order, the progression has really given you steps that have isolated parts of the body. We worked first inside the ribs and then the, specifically the arms and then the legs. What's great about that is that you can do all of those things wherever you are. No mat required, no fancy yoga pants necessary. You can actually align and apply these principles of expanding from the inside and toning uniformly up the limbs to create an effect in your body, to create an effect in your posture, how you sit at your desk, how you sit in your car, how you write emails, how you stand in a conversation. So when you can actually work these individual pieces from the radiant heart expanding out and the arms strengthening and then the legs rooting behind you to get the pelvis in a healthy rooted position, then you can start to apply these things together and put them in a whole systems approach of starting to lengthen, starting to really create what we, the, the, the idea and the principle of tensegrity, where the bones are literally pulling apart and floating in the matrix of soft tissue of the body, of the fascial network, of the tendons and the ligaments and the muscles, all working together, not to just squeeze and harden, but to be able to tone and lengthen and create from that pulling apart feeling so much dynamism, so much back and forth, so much energy to be able to keep a sense of lightness in the body. So I'm gonna go through a real quick breathing practice and connecting through all of the parts that we've discussed. And then we're gonna actually just use a plain old desk to get the feeling of what we're looking for in the belly wall and to lengthen through the neck. So day four is about the spools of the body. We talk about the ribs and then the hips and then we rooted as we rose through the upper ribs and expanded on all sides and got the pelvis really dynamically behind us to find the power in the legs. So now we're looking for the spools between these spherical shapes of rib cage and pelvis and we talk about them like spools because they narrow in and then widen up top to think of like basically reflecting a spool of thread. Okay, so just that idea is that as you pull the ribs and hips apart from each other and that loving tug of love, I like to call it, hips root, ribs rise, the waistline naturally narrows and it's juicy. It narrows right at T12 and it really does create a cinching effect at the waistline. Now, by no means do you have to squeeze hard, tuck, crunch, and do a lot of rep repetitive you know, hardening in the front of these belly wall muscles in fact, the first step is just relaxing your belly all together. Now I'm going to con continue to do these videos and go deeper and deeper, but I just want you to consider that all day, every day, when someone comes at us, when we have a tricky moment, when we have a challenging, challenging situation, the belly can really be the one that starts to prepare for battle even, that starts to harden and create an armor out of protection, out of this fight or flight reactivity, which is through the nervous system. And there's a lot to discuss when we apply the bowspring alignment about the nervous system, but today I bring it up because this is a really sensitive part of the body. And there's something that can take place when we squeeze and crunch the six pack abs and we tuck our tailbone under that creates such a hardening impact that we lose sensation. We actually lose access to what's happening in the core of the body, the low, deep rooted area of the body. And we discussed that as we found our seat, how important it is to anchor through the pubic bone. And now just really allowing the belly to relax and come forward 
do it when no one's watching and you'll be a little bit more likely to let go. But I guarantee you there will still be a little bit of hesitation. Even when I come into my practice and I'm ready to find my breath, when I let my belly go, there's always just a little bit of a tremor. It's like, you know, I just kind of feel that shakiness in my breath as I let it go. And I know that's because I've been holding it throughout the day or I've been protecting myself throughout the day. So we take the time when we talk about the belly to really consider letting this area go and letting it relax and letting it soften forward. But of course, never just pulling everything. We're still in radiant heart. We still have the strength and support of the arms and the legs. But now we feel almost supported and almost safe to help relax this area. Because as we let it come forward, that's when we can really start to pull the areas of root, rooted hips and rising ribs apart. And then we get crazy long and strong as the waistline starts to get pulled taut as this fascial tissue, which works like an X across the belly button, starts to get really long and strong. So come with me here as we go into all the subsystems and then we'll focus on the ribs, or excuse me, the belly as we work with the table, okay, the, the desk. So first thing, just step for, sit forward onto your chair, and as you do, let your feet go wider apart. And then as you create that, just setting the stage for you to do a little practicing, notice how your attention comes online a little bit differently. So find your breath aware and deep in this moment. And think about moving the ribs wide and back into that fullness. You can expand and then lengthen the ribs push wide and back, and then reach the chest up, the crown of the head upwards towards the sky, and feel how just the lifting of your chest, the extension of the spine, and the undulation of your double S curve can actually help to straighten the arms. You don't have to push anything in the elbows. Just lift up inside, and the arms naturally extend. And then let the fingers just sweetly cup over your kneecaps. So there's not a lot of hardening in the hands. You're just gently squeezing the fingers against the knees and then tip your pelvic bowl forward. And as you do, you allow yourself to let the belly go and keep the ribs filling and lifting behind you. So you're expanding dimensionally to the front and to the back as you breathe. And then find the legs supporting a rooted pelvis. As you dig the feet forward, tip your groins lower, rooting through the pubis, and then drag your heels back as you squeeze up the legs. And then lean forward. You can place the heels lightly to the earth, but lift up off your chair, and then sit right back down. And then keep pushing upwards through the crown of the head as you lean forward and lift up off the chair, digging the feet forward away from each other. Send the groins back, sit back down on the chair. Just lifting and lowering a couple of times. Rooting the legs, sending the hips back as you rise up, keeping the tone in the legs as you sit the hips down. And then we're gonna use the desk here, keeping the same idea of ribs full, arms strong, legs rooted. We're going to find the belly. So as I lift up off my chair, I'm staying with my hips behind me. I'm really looking for, and I've got to keep looking for it at the beginning, the back of the legs. If you only feel the thighs, just keep looking. Push back, find the back of the legs, the hamstrings, and just bring your elbows to the desk. And as you interlace the fingers, there's just a little bit of support <clears throat> so that you don't collapse down. That's really easy to do keeping inside integrity. And there's a lot to be said about that. Keeping alignment on the inner spaces. No matter what happens, you don't collapse the inner capacity. You don't diminish what's inside or kink off the hose of your own central channel, your core axis. So you lift the core of the body. You inflate it circumferentially in all directions. And then as you allow the ribs inflating to cope to expand radiant heart, press the forearms down and get tone in the arms as you stretch the chest forward. And then as you dig into the feet, bending your knees, your groins sweep further back behind you and your tail can lift. And as you pulse a little, stretching from the belly button forward and then rooting the pubic bone back, you're starting to create maximum distance here between the area of the navel and the pubic bone. 
Now this is a conversation that is ongoing that you can work on for many, many practices and still find more and more length. So as you move the belly navel, belly button and navel, and pubic bone apart from each other without letting the ribs drop, you're going to start to feel a deep tone in the waistline. Think of it like the head of a drum. Super, super taut, strong as you stretch it long. So bending at the knees, you can send your groins back with the rooted power in the legs. And as you stretch, keeping the back of your ribs nice and full, nice and expanded, you stretch the pubis and the navel apart from each other, you're gonna start to feel the waistline. And you can really keep that tone as you start to come up more right, more vertical, you can bring the hands to the knees and stay rooted through the pubis and stretch up through the belly button. And then you can even keep that as you sit back down into your chair, finding the support of not only the belly, but the lifted rib cage and the long and strong belly wall. I highly encourage you to keep your elbows down into the floor, onto the table, and sit the hips back and do a little bit of pulsing where the arms and the legs are so strong that they help with that sweet tug of love of hips rooting and ribs rising in opposition. And there's a deep, deep sensation that I promise you is very pleasurable and really, really strong feeling of you being able to tone your core and find that length and strength all at the same time. Takes a couple of practices, keeps, keeps a commitment, and it adds on everything that we've done so far until today. So look for it, enjoy that stretch as you go and explore into the areas of the body, and then let me know what questions you have. If things are a little bit unclear, see if you can take the time to really try it again, find more rootedness, find more length, and explore the side-to-side -side movements. And I'm always here to hear your feedback. Give me, a, give me a thumbs up or a like or subscribe to my YouTube channel because there's more videos coming. So I'm excited to keep sharing on this journey with you. I love you guys so much. There's more to come. Take care. Namaste.